Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And it has been a long time since I started an episode like this where I'm actually cooking. Uh, when I originally started this show, it was because I was kind of inspired by Tom Hardy working out to get in shape for the role that he was doing for Venom and Eddie Brock. And so I started that as like a like a goal, like you know, all right, before the movie comes out, try to lose 20 pounds. And I've been fluctuating. I lost 10 pounds, and then I gained a few, and then I lost a few. And so I think now I'm like around you know 12 pounds I've lost since we started. It was originally I started. At two, uh, 212 pounds, but when I actually started keeping track of what I wanted to lose, it was at 208 pounds, and now I'm down to 196 pounds, uh, and uh, I feel a little bit better but I feel like it doesn't show in a lot of areas so I'm trying to get rid of this last 10 pounds but I am struggling with it uh, especially with all the stuff that's been going on lately so uh, tonight I decided to cook myself a meal since I kind of slept when I got home from work and I didn't have time to you know uh, go out and grab something which is good for me because then I can come home and make greens and some sausage and uh, then also made some extra for work tomorrow so I'm going to try to get back and and really try to lose those last like 10 pounds and even if we lose all 20 pounds which is our goal from 208 down to uh, 188 even if we hit 188 my goal is to keep that off up until the movie comes out so I don't know it's gonna be a tough call because I thought by six months by now I would have already lost the 20 uh, but with everything going on you know you probably can understand why you know <laughs> that I can't and then also with like work and stuff I've been working so much that I've been eating kind of junk food at the mall uh, so it's it's a little tough uh, but anyway today we are gonna look at the death of Anne Wang I thought it would be good to do an intro for this video because there's not a lot to say about the comic where she dies in because I feel like it's handled a little bit poorly in my opinion even though I think the writer and the artists that were on the book are very great writers and artists um, so we're gonna dive into that we're gonna dive into a little bit of the aftermath of that and this is gonna kind of wrap up uh, this week you know with the trailer coming out tomorrow um, and all the information that's gonna come out around episode 150 when we celebrate 30 years of Venom that's gonna kind of wrap up season one of this show but I'm not gonna renumber I'm not like you know Marvel I'm not gonna renumber back to season two episode one or anything like that uh, I'm just gonna keep going forward with episodes but we're kind of at a pivotal point now in the comic book history of Venom where it kind of you know it, it ends in a way like this is kind of an end talking about Anne Wang's death. I feel like it's the end of chapter one of Eddie Brock's life, the early years. And then what we get into next is when the suit goes to other people, Matt Gargan, Agent Venom. Uh, we talk about the, you know, the Shiver storyline, the Marvel Tsunami stuff. Uh, we're going to go into the Ultimate Universe for a little bit. So we have a lot of things coming up, and I consider this like chapter two of the Venom saga out of the three chapters there are. So, uh, and then I would say the Lee Price storyline, like the, the recent reboot and what's coming up with Donnie Cates, I would say this is like the beginning of chapter three. So we're going to go into into chapter two next, but first we're going to talk about the death of Anne Wang and the effect it has on Eddie Brock's life. So let's get into it. All right, so let's dive into the death of Anne Wang because there's not a lot to talk about here. Uh, like I said in the intro, like this only happened in one issue of Spider-Man. It was Amazing Spider-Man number 19 from the volume two run of Amazing Spider-Man. So after the Clone Saga, a little bit after, they did this thing called The Gathering of Five. It was a big Norman Osborn story and the books were just doing really bad at that point. So they, what they did was they got John Byrne to come in and be like, hey, can you kind of write a new origin story, like an updated origin for Spider-Man for a new generation, and then will you also take over, you know, writing and uh, drawing some of the books. And we're going to condense the four or five Spider-Man monthly titles down to just two, Amazing Spider-Man and Peter Parker Spider-Man. So you saw in that last episode that we did like a week ago before all the, you know, CinemaCon stuff, we talked about, um, the you know, Venom is back, and he was just kind of brought back, and it felt kind of haphazard and kind of thrown in. And it seemed like any cool idea they had set up uh, just didn't really have time to pay off because it looked like Howard Mackey definitely wanted to focus on the Peter Parker story, maybe, you know, Mary Jane missing, like that whole story, the fact she had a stalker, then she went missing for a while, uh, and then Senator Ward and Arthur Stacy and that whole relationship, and then bringing in Jill Stacy as well. So there was a lot that he was doing really well, I thought, on the book. Uh, but as a Venom fan, I felt like I was a little let down by some of the stories that were being told with Venom because it just felt like, oh, he's coming back in. He's going to be this new threat. He ate Carnage. He's, you know, powered up now. So I'm really excited where they're going to go with this. And it just kind of peters off, like uh, no pun intended. Uh, but, uh, you know, I love Howard Mackey. I love his stuff. And so it's hard to say why. Like, I, I, obviously I wasn't there. I don't know if there was something in editorial that just kept saying, like, hey, put Venom stuff in. That'll help sell the books. Every time Venom shows up, you know, we spike in sales. So, like, can do, can you do that? Um, so I don't know if it was that kind of thing or if, it, you know, a lot of times in Marvel, especially, uh, there's artists that just draw stuff uh, based on, like, a quick outline, like a four-page outline that a writer will come up with. And then they'll go and draw a bunch of it. And then the, you know, writer will come back in and fill in the dialogue and come up with these stories. So I don't know if that was, like, the case of why 
why some of these issues feel the way they do. Um, it could be a number of reasons, uh, but I know Howard Mack is a great writer. I'm a big fan of his. I love his Ghost Rider run, like tremendously love that run. And we will probably talk about that at some point. That was originally the show I was going to do uh, before I came up with the Venom vlog was going to be just rereading and reviewing that entire run. And at some point I may do that because I love that run. It's very entrenched in my childhood, uh, that run, that Ghost Rider run. And then also kind of speaks to why I'm a big fan of the show Supernatural because I see a lot of parallels there uh, between the 90s Ghost Rider and Supernatural. So we'll dive into that at some point. Uh, but for today, we're just gonna talk about Amazing Spider-Man number 19, volume two, and then a couple of the issues that came out afterwards uh, where you know they dealt with, slightly dealt with the ramifications of Anne Weying's death. Um, and again, like, there, you know, Anne Wang, I've seen her name spelled twice in the comics. Usually it's A-N-N, -N, but it seems like A-N-N-E became, like, the proper way to spell it, I guess. And I know the movie's spelling it that way as well, I think. At least it shows it on IMDb. So, uh, but on Wikipedia and all the other places, they list her as A-N-N-E, Anne Wang. Uh, so it's really hard to say which one is right. So I just say they're both right, because really, who cares? It's just one letter. Um, but, uh, you know, in this issue, like, it kind of starts off and you, you see... And kind of, you know, she's going through something really tra traumatic. She, she had bonded with the symbiote uh, twice now, although the book only references that she bonded once. They, they mention um, Sinner Takes All, where she bonded with, uh, you know, the symbiote at that point, but they don't reference Along Came a Spider, uh, which obviously also happened before this. So she has bonded actually with the symbiote twice, even though the book only mentions it, that she bonded once. And so she's Tra traumatized by that she's in her apartment she hasn't come out in months as she says to eddie when she sees him and she's like sitting in her apartment in the dark she won't open the blinds she won't look outside she's freaking out she's trying to reach for the door she's like just open the door go outside you know get some fresh air like you know and then she can't she's so freaked out by everything that she can't do it and like i said almost like it's lazy writing or it's just corner cutting or whatever the reason is uh eddie is just at home you know he's like going around he's like says he's like narrating and he's like he's like you know i've been going around slum to slum all over the you know the u.s and it, i'm tired of this i want my life back i want Anne back i want you know um you know i had a career before i had a life i was in love i want all that stuff back and you're like okay that's interesting but after everything he's just recently done to Spider-Man, it feels like it's totally out of left field. And then also the symbiote seems to have no opinion on this, uh, which is also weird. When you write Venom, you kind of have to have them both, uh, you know, have an opinion on things that they do. And the fact that they didn't even tackle that is, is also where I kind of struggle with this, this storyline big time. Um, so part of me is glad it was just one issue, but also at the same time, I would have liked this if this was like three or four issues and it was, you know, this is how they brought Venom back. Maybe he disappeared after the finale, then gets his suit back in like issue eight of Spider-Man. And then this happened in a four issue arc to wrap up like, you know, a Venom story or give some kind of closure or motivate him to be a villain again, whatever. That's what I think they should have done. And in hindsight, you know, we have the power of hindsight. So, of course, you know, it's easy to say, oh, they should have done this. Uh, but, you know, at the time, you never know. So in this issue, she's freaking out. She doesn't want to go outside. Eddie randomly decides to go visit her. And then Peter also at the same time, um, and Mary Jane's missing. Everyone thinks she died in a plane crash. He doesn't believe it. So he's like, I'm going to go, uh, you know, I got to go find her. I'm, I'm tired of just sitting around waiting. I'm going to go out and find her. But my costume got destroyed. Uh, in a recent battle, so I need to go find a new costume, and I have a spare somewhere at Aunt May's house, so I'm going to go there and get it. And of course, when he goes there, he sees Jill Stacy, and then that leads almost into, uh, you know, a, a confrontation, not a really confrontation, but I guess a meeting with him and Arthur Stacy. but after, you know, Arthur tried to kill Senator Ward, and Senator Ward revealed he had superpowers and got away, which we talked about in the last comic issue that we discussed, the Venom is back one, um, you know, he doesn't want to be around Arthur Stacy. He's like, dude, I, I I admired this guy, and now he's just a killer, and he wants to kill someone. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna like, you know, deal. I don't want to deal with him today, basically. Uh, so he decides, like, you know, like, all right, Jill, I'm gonna go this way, and he goes into Aunt May's house, looks in the attic, and all he can find is the old, the cloth black costume. Uh, coincidentally, right? Uh, so again, just all these things, just, just like I feel like just lazy storytelling on a lot of levels. Um, and so he grabs the black costume, puts it on, swings around New York, and then just coincidentally, as Eddie's seeing Anne Wang and talking with her, trying to, you know, uh, you know, talk some sense into her and say, hey, like, look, I love you. I, I want to put all the stuff behind us. I want to reconnect with you. And meanwhile, the suit's not saying, no, Eddie, don't do it. Like, you know, I'm jealous. It's like the suit has no opinion, apparently, on any of this. And it's just okay with it, I guess. And then so, uh, so you know, Eddie goes over to the uh, window, opens up the blinds, and, uh, 
she looks outside and doesn't see the sunlight at all, even though it's shining right on her. Instead, coincidentally, Spider-Man is swinging by right at that exact minute in the black costume. So she freaks out and goes, oh my God, the black costume, it's here, it's here. No, get it away from me, get it away from me. And she's, you know, her PTSD, her she's so traumatized by it, she's freaking out. And then, of course, Eddie's like, oh, don't worry, Anne, I'll get him. And he reveals that he's wearing the actual black costume and he turns into Venom in front of her and that freaks her out even more, just pushes her way over the edge. And uh, she's just babbling at this point, kind of incoherent, freaking out, just, no, 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 get away. And so Eddie decides to leave and go after Spider-Man. And uh, so the two of them are out there, they're fighting in New York uh, in the streets. And then, you know, after a couple pages of just fighting and punching each other, uh, Venom just says, I want you to stay away from Anne. And Spider-Man's like, okay. And he goes, what? And he goes, yeah, that's fine. I'll stay away from your wife. He's like, uh, is that all you want? And he's like, and Venom's like, yeah, that's all I want. And he goes, oh, he goes, I, I guess we fight so much. I never thought of just asking you uh, if you'll stay away from her. And Peter's like, yeah, I don't, whatever, man. He's like, if you want to be with your wife, if you want to try to start over, you know, at this point, obviously Peter's going through an emotional thing with his wife. He can't find Mary Jane. He believes she's still alive somewhere, even though no one believes him. So he's kind of like, look, if you want to be with your wife, I get it. I totally understand. So why don't you go be with your wife? But you're still a wanted felon. So if I see you do anything, I'm going to come after you. And Venom's like, yeah, you'll try. And so they kind of leave like buddies in a way, uh, which, you know, kind of makes sense. They kind of had that truce still. So, um, you know, Peter's like, yeah, I have no stake in this, man. Why don't you just go back to your wife? Then they hear a scream and... And, you know, from like a few blocks away, I guess. And Venom goes, oh, Anne. And then so he webs off to go see what happened. And Spider-Man, who's supposed to be the hero, is like, well, I guess I'm going to regret that decision at some point. And he webs off in the other direction. It's like, you just heard a woman scream uh, a few blocks away. Like, don't you want to at least go see what's wrong? Uh, so, yeah, I also didn't. But I wasn't buying that either for a second. So Peter goes off, you know, to look for his own wife, which I get. He has things on his mind, but still possibly someone in danger. It's weird that Spider-Man would swing away from that. And Eddie goes back and instead of like swinging past where Anne fell out of her window, the way the Eric Larson, who was the artist, drew it was that Venom went through the front door, went upstairs in her building, came through the front door as Eddie Brock, and then looked out her window and saw her die. And I'm like, wouldn't he have swung past that on his way in and saw that commotion uh, as Venom? Why, you know, so again, yeah, I'm not a big fan of this issue, as you can tell. There's a lot of things that I'm just like, this doesn't make sense. This this doesn't work. Uh, and then, you know, so so we get her death, and it happens off panel, and it happens where she jumps out of a window and hits the pavement outside of her building. So we don't see, you know, it happen. Uh, normally in comics, that means she's not dead. Uh, so I'm waiting for a writer to maybe one day, you know, uh, pick that story up and say that maybe it was something the symbiote did to Eddie Brock's mind to make him think she died. Uh, I think that would be an interesting story. Maybe she's under witness protection, uh, you know, or something like that. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not buying the death, but at the same time, because she's dead, I thought it was a very bad way to handle her death, especially suicide. That's such a, you know, emotional topic um, that has been handled, you know, very well in Spider-Man books before. So to kind of just throw it in here felt really weak to me. Uh, so, uh, so unfortunately that was though the death of Ann Wang. So after that, we get a couple issues after that where, um, I think it was Amazing Spider-Man, uh, two, uh, 22 and 23 and maybe 24, a three-part storyline where Senator Ward comes back and he steals the symbiote off of Eddie Brock. So Eddie doesn't even have time to like really deal with Anne's dying, you know, her death. He goes to her, her, um, the, her tombstone and he's like talking over it and he's like, Anne, don't worry, I'll make Spider-Man pay. He was the one who distracted me. He's the one who upset you and now you're dead. So I'm, you know, so it reinvigorated a hatred for Spider-Man. But before he can go do that or carry that out, um, you know, he, I think he gets into a slight altercation with Spider-Man and he's like, you killed Anne. And, 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 you know, Peter's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know she died. Like, I, you know, I didn't mean for that to happen. And Eddie's like, yeah, whatever. I hate you you know, and, and then Eddie gets separated from Spider-Man and Senator Ward finds him and rips the symbiote costume off him. So there's not even any closure for Eddie in a way. He gets the suit ripped off him and that's that. It's That's just it. And then it's really never mentioned again in comics after that, that Eddie feels that Spider-Man's responsible for Anne's death. So it's just this thread that just kind of gets thrown away. Uh, and then once Senator Ward rips the symbiote off of Eddie, he kind of just uses it to learn about it. He's like, hey, I have a virus called the Xenox alien race are like infected me with something. That's where all my powers come from. So you start to learn more about Senator Ward. He's got this weird power where he can like disintegrate people and feed off them. Um, so he's kind of like this walking like biohazard in a way. And he grabs a symbiote and he's like, there's aliens in me that are manipulating my DNA. So I want to learn about them. I, and I, I think I can learn something from you and apply it to what's happening to my body. So he's just kind of playing with the symbiote like this and he's stretching it and he's like reading its mind and 
learning from it. And then after he gets what he wants from it, he just says, all right, go back to Eddie Brock. Like, I don't need you anymore. I'm fine. And then he fights Spider-Man for two issues after that with these aliens called the Xenox. And that's it. And that's the last time you see a Venom for like a while in the comic books. Uh, so to me, this feels like kind of the in a way, it's the end of the chapter one of Eddie Brock's life. In my eyes, like I categorized, you know, his history and kind of go, all right, this is around early 2000s. To me, the finale should have been like the end of his first, you know, like decade of comics that pretty much was. It was 1988 to 1998. And normally I would consider that. Uh, but with the death of Anne Wang and since, you know, nothing major happened before it and nothing really major for a while happened after it. I figured that could be a nice interlude into chapter two of his life or just be the real ending of chapter one because it is, you know, a, a closure in a way, even though I don't think it's handled very well. Um, so, yeah, have you guys read these issues? I know I had probably some of the artwork up uh, when, you know, when you're watching this video. Have you read any of these issues? Uh, they are found, I think, in Spider-Man chapter three. Uh, Spider-Man the next chapter, volume three. I'm sorry, it has Carnage on the cover. So that's one uh, where you can get the Death of Anne Wang. And then the other one is called Spider-Man Return of the Green Goblin, and it's another trade paperback. You can get it digitally or in print, and that will have, like, the Senator Ward stuff playing with the symbiote and all that stuff. Uh, so it's, you know, not a lot in there for you Venom fans uh, if you buy those two trades. Uh, but uh, but at least you get something. I think you get the Sandman battle at least in the uh, chapter three uh, or the next chapter, volume three. I think you get the Sandman battle in there with him and Venom. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't really, I didn't really dig this era, even though I loved the writer and I liked a lot of the artists on it. John Romita Jr. was killing it on Spider-Man at the time. I felt um, Eric Larson's, you know, amazing artist, drew some of the early Venom stuff, Savage Dragon, like really great teams on these books but I just don't know where the ball was dropped because for me like this is probably my least favorite time in Venom's history and I think it should have been filled with the most emotional stuff in his history and should have catapulted him into the next phase of his life and instead it was handled in my opinion very very poorly uh, but maybe you guys have a different opinion so let me know down in the comments below and uh, this is the last video I'm recording before the trailer comes up so I'm very excited we're going to get a new trailer from CinemaCon hopefully it pops up tomorrow I don't know if it's going to you know they're going to air it live on Online, or if it's just going to be something they show at the show and then make us all wait until you know Friday for Infinity War I don't know what what's going to happen but rest assured one way or another we'll make some kind of video tomorrow night on something uh, but uh, this you know this is going to be it for season one of the show once we hit issue or episode 150 that's going to kind of be the finale we're going to do the digital giveaway for Venom's 30th anniversary and then after that we'll pick up with 151 uh, since we'll have a new trailer I'll have new images of Venom probably I'll make a new intro and we'll start with season two with uh, episode 151. So I'm very excited. Thank you guys for being here for the ride and thanks for watching these videos where I break down these comic books. Hope you like them. If so, let me know down in the comments below. And if you disagree, let me know that down below as well. As always, thanks for watching my show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.